Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back to the second lecture of Chapter 7. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the LaSalle Invariance Principle, a really intriguing and remarkable result, and relate how it uh, works together with the um, Lyapunov's method that I talked about in the last lecture. And we'll see some examples of that later on in this chapter. Okay, so the initial setup is the same. We have an n-dimensional autonomous ODE on Rn. We assume it's CR, R greater than or equal to 1. Now, we're going to let phi t denote the flow generated by, so by 710, by this ODE. Now, I said in talking about uh, Lyapunov's method last time that we don't, we, we didn't need to know the solutions. It gave us information without needing to actually compute the solutions or do any linearization or anything like that. This is going to be the same, but uh, we need to the we need to describe what uh, this uh, we need some notation for the solutions, even though we don't actually need to compute them. So in the Lyapunov method, what it gave us, at least in the way that I developed it, it was we started with an equilibrium point, and the result was about stability of that equilibrium point. We don't have that here. We're not. We don't, uh, we're not making such an assumption at the, at the beginning. So we need three sets. Calligraphic M is a positive invariant set in Rn, and it, we assume that it's compact. In, this, in the setting for uh, being a subset of Rn, like this, we need it to be closed, that it contains all its boundary points, and bounded. Okay, so closed and bounded, positive invariant set. How do we find it? Again, worry about that later. We have a scalar valued function. That we use the same notation that we use for the Lyapunov function. But it has the property. We haven't said anything about positive or anything like that. Uh, it has the property that its time derivative along trajectories is less than or equal. Note the equal in M, in this positive variate set. So it's a sec. Um, so that's V. Calligraphic M is positive invariant set. Now, E. E is a set of points in this positive invariant set where V dot is actually zero. Okay. And then the last set. We have calligraphic M. We have E and we have uppercase Roman M. And that is the union of all trajectories that start in E and remain in E for all positive time. All right, now we can state the LaSalle invariance principle. For all points in calligraphic M, the, the positive invariance set, the trajectory through that point approaches this set, uppercase Roman M, as t goes to infinity. Now, you're saying, well, uh, so what? What does that mean? Um, okay, well, this is, means this is a pretty striking result, but we need, but you only start to see that when you see examples. All right, so here's the first example we're going to look at, and you've seen this before. x dot equals y, y dot equals x minus x cubed minus delta y. We saw this in the last chapter. Remember? And this had three equilibrium points, and they're all on the x-axis. x equal um, 0, 0, x equal plus or minus 1, 0. And uh, the origin was always an equilibrium point. There is a parameter here. And the for delta strictly greater than 0, 
the points plus or minus one zero are sinks, but the nature of their linearization, remember, was a bit different. And so this is what the space looked like, the, 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 the local invariant manifold structure for these three equilibria. And I told you that uh, the global structure looked something like this, and I talked about basin attraction and so on. I said we, we would eventually get the techniques for understanding why this is the case, but um, we didn't have them at the time, but the LaSalle invariance principle is the first step to understanding this. So one final thing to point out about this example, we have these three equilibria. If I start on the x-axis, so y equals zero, y dot is, so y equals zero, y dot is only zero at x equal, at the, at the three equilibrium points. Other, meaning, if we're not on one of the, the equilibrium points, y dot is non-zero, meaning that we leave the x-axis. Okay, so the only points that start on the x-axis and stay on the x-axis are the three equilibrium points. Okay, random facts it seems. But we go back to here for this example. So I, I need uh, my function v. And this is what I'm going to use for v. Where did this come from? Okay, well, not going to tell you quite yet but I want to illustrate the method. But what, what do the level sets of V look like? Well, for X and Y large, this is the dominant, the, the dominant expressions are Y squared over two, X to the fourth over four. So the level curves look like sort of peanuts um, for X and Y large for y, um, yes, for x and y large. Okay, now let's compute the time derivative along of trajectories, and we compute the gradient of that weird function I just showed you, and we take the dot product with a vector field, our example we did in the last chapter, and I'm revisiting. You can see that the v dot is minus delta y squared, and now we know why we're going to want delta greater than zero in this case. So v dot is less than or equal to zero on a large level set, so that defines a positive invariant set. So v dot is decreasing, so it less than or equal to zero means if you start on the boundary, you either leave the boundary or you stay on that boundary for the places for, for time greater than zero for y equals, for where it vanishes, v dot vanishes. Okay, so that gives us our positive invariant set M. That's just the general framework to get going. So all trajectories are bounded if we start in this big region. Now E, E is a set of points where v dot is zero. That's, you can see, that's when y equals zero, the x-axis. So v dot is zero on the x-axis. Well, not all the x-axis, but just the part intersecting with m, but that's as big as we want. Now, the only points in E that remain in all, E for all time, are the three equilibrium points. Remember, I just argued that if you're not on one of the equilibrium points, but you start on the x-axis, you leave because y dot is non-zero, except for the three equilibrium points. So the LaSalle invariance principle tells us that given any initial condition, you're going to approach one of these three equilibrium points. Now that's pretty interesting. Um, and we're going to see some applications of it in the, um, in the exercises at the end of the chapter. So I'll stop there for right now. I have two more things to talk about in this chapter that are 
kind of add-ons, but uh, they're useful at times. Bendixson's criteria and the uh, and the index theory for planar vector fields. Lyapunov's theorem and the Lasalle invariance principle um, are true in um, arbitrary dimensions, but the last couple of things are useful um, for planar vector fields, two-dimensional vector fields. Okay, so it's a good place to stop. Um, we could talk a lot about how these generalize. This, there's a lot of deep mathematical results in Lyapunov's method and Lasalle invariance principle, um, but I don't have time to go into that, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!